According to Marvel comic book lore, thousands of years ago, an alien meteorite containing vibranium impacted Africa. And from this mound of metal, the technological marvel that is Wakanda and their Black Panthers sprung forth. But if a meteorite made of kinetic energy absorbing metal really hit Earth, what would happen? Vibranium, the strongest and most wondrous metal on Earth, is the reason why the fictional nation of Wakanda is simultaneously so wealthy and so advanced. It powers their homes, it heals their wounds, and it's weaved into their fierce Black Panther suits. 50 years of comic book history has given vibranium a number of amazing properties. However, if most notable among them is the ability to absorb kinetic energy, how would the meteorite it arrived in actually behave? And what would that mean for Black Panther's suit? This is a very specific question, but I think it will help us visualize a number of vibranium's weird properties. So let's start with what we know. According to the comics, the original meteorite had 10,000 tons of vibranium in it, or 10 million kilograms. At least, that's what was left over when it impacted the ground. And that's all we know. We don't know the density of vibranium, we don't know the velocity of the meteorite, and we don't know how much of the meteorite was vibranium by volume, but we can estimate these. For the density of vibranium, let's choose that of another lightweight strong metal like titanium with 4.5 grams per cubic centimeter. For the velocity of the meteorite though, we don't know where in the universe it was coming from, so it could be somewhere between 11 and 72 kilometers per second. That's how fast things coming in to punch Earth's face go, depending on their orbit. So how about 40 kilometers per second, right in the middle there. But how much volume was the vibranium taking up in the original meteorite? Let's look to the new movie and say it looks like uh, 50%. Plugging these numbers into a program that can simulate meteorite impacts like Wolfram Alpha, which I use for everything, we can estimate how big of a crater our vibranium meteorite would make. And it would be literally this deep. Nothing. Using our assumed density, our space rock made out of vibranium would only be 20 meters in diameter. And because of how objects heat up as they travel through Earth's atmosphere, this is small enough to fully burn up and explode over a dozen kilometers above Earth's surface. So it would never make it to the ground. You can play around with the density values for vibranium, but unless the comics add a lot more initial mass than 10,000 tons to this space rock, it's not getting much bigger than this. NASA estimates that nearly all rocky meteorites under 25 meters across break up and don't make it to the ground intact. But NASA never had to deal with vibranium, so let's simply assert that the meteorite doesn't break up in the air and create an explosion because it's the most durable thing in the universe. If it did hit the ground that would become Wakanda, the meteorite's kinetic energy would be able to carve out a crater the size of Meteor Crater in Arizona. And that is a bowl of destruction over a kilometer in diameter and 170 meters deep. Thinking back to a previous episode, this is the energy equivalent of Black Panther suit absorbing the kinetic energy of 25 trillion nine millimeter bullets. At this exact rate, it would take me 250,000 years to show you, so let's Move it on. But this destruction wouldn't happen when vibranium's weirdness kicks in. Whoa, still rogue. Here's a question. What happens if I take a ball and I throw it as hard as I can at Black Panther's suit? Well, if the suit is absorbing the maximum amount of kinetic energy, maybe it uses a nanoscale spring-like design like we speculated in a previous episode, then when I threw the ball at his suit, it would stick to his suit, which is weird and doesn't quite fit with what we see in everything else. So let's just say that the suit absorbs almost all of the kinetic energy of projectiles. Then when the ball hit his suit, it would kind of hit it and drop off pathetically. Okay, but even though the kinetic energy is being absorbed, momentum from that ball is still affecting him. Momentum, or an object's mass times an object's velocity, is conserved. Kinetic energy doesn't always have to be. So no matter what happens to the kinetic energy of the ball, the momentum of the ball before has to equal the momentum of both T'Challa and the ball after. 
This means that impacts do affect T'Challa. They can't just hit him and stop. If I threw a ball at T'Challa because of the conservation of momentum and he was on a frictionless surface, for example, he would indeed move backwards. So something made out of vibranium still has to deal with momentum. Though in most circumstances, Black Panther wouldn't be forced backwards by a ball or a bullet. His mass creates a frictional force at his feet that is more likely than not enough to resist the small change in momentum over time, the force that a bullet or ball would give his body. But something like a rhino or a car certainly could overcome this force. Think of all of the momentum behind a full-on rhino charge. This is bound to be a larger force than the frictional force at the average person's feet, and the rhino wouldn't just stop in its tracks after it hit Black Panther, it would send him flying. And the cool thing is, we saw this happen in the new film. You are not indestructible inside a vibranium suit. <laughs> if T'Challa can wear a vibranium suit but still get knocked around, what is special about vibranium? Where are those weird effects that we read about online and in the comics and see in the movies? Well, check this out. Hear that? Exactly. The special thing about vibranium is that it can redirect where we think the kinetic energy of collisions should go. If they are all going into deformation, into potential energy, that means that they're probably not going into what we expect, like heat and sound. Which means that high-fiving Black Panther sounds like this. Up top, come on, okay. <laughs> this also means that Black Panther's suit, when he walks around, makes his footsteps silent. We see that in the movie too. <laughs> what all this means for a vibranium meteor is one weird impact. Oh, and the meteor would be worth all of the world's financial assets combined at its current evaluation. So there's that. <laughs> now I asked a super nerd, an astronomer, an astrophysicist, and a quantum physicist what they think would happen if a vibranium meteorite hit Earth. And our conclusion was, Vibranium's really weird and inconsistent. So instead, I'm gonna give you the conclusion that I think balances the science and the comic canon the best. First, the meteor comes screaming into Earth's atmosphere. At 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface, the meteoroid encounters the Kármán line, which is the line below which most of Earth's atmosphere resides. This is also the most commonly cited boundary to space. Space. As our vibranium meteor made its way towards the ground, the air in front of it, on the leading edge, would bunch up and compress, forming shock waves and an awful lot of heat. This compression heating is what burns up and blows up smaller celestial objects. It's the same reason why the Chelyabinsk meteor in 2013 blew up over Russia in an airburst that injured over a thousand people and damaged thousands of buildings. And our vibranium meteor is the same size, but it wouldn't produce an airburst because the kinetic energy of the gas in front of it, its temperature would be absorbed in the meteorite. This is making it to the ground. When it reaches the ground, the meteor will have been slowed down quite a bit by the atmosphere, but it will still be traveling many kilometers per second. Smart boy Isaac Newton actually came up with a very clever approximation of how deep a hypervelocity projectile would bury itself in a target given only momentum considerations, which is perfect for us. The approximation here is that the depth the impactor will embed itself into the target is proportional to the length of the impactor, we're gonna use diameter in this case, multiplied by the ratio of the densities between the impactor and the target. Given everything that we've assumed, the vibranium meteor that struck the ground that would become Wakanda would bury itself over 30 meters in the dirt, over 100 feet. But there wouldn't be a massive explosion like that which created the meteor crater in Arizona, because the kinetic energy of this impact isn't going back into the vibranium to vaporize it and cause a, a huge gas fireball explosion. No, there would be some shock waves produced at the bottom of this hole as rocks 
experience extreme pressures, some would even melt, but this would be the most tame meteor impact of this size in Earth's history. So what would happen if a meteorite like the one that started Wakanda struck Earth? And what could that tell us about how vibranium works? Well, I've thought about vibranium for literally dozens of hours now. And I think the takeaway is that even if kinetic energy is absorbed, momentum is not. It makes for a pretty tame meteor strike because there wouldn't be a giant vapor explosion fireball, and it means a suit that you're not totally safe in. Oh, also silent high fives. Come on, give it to me. Dang. In the real world, we cannot separate kinetic energy from momentum in this way. They are two sides of the same coin. But here, in the pop culture verse, I think vibranium can be an introduction to physics, to how the world really works. Because science. Come on, give it to me! Woo! All right! Momentum is conserved in all cases. So, if our vibranium meteorite hit Earth at the size and density that we estimated, it would change the velocity of Earth. If you consider it like a simple system, just a big hunk of mass and a little hunk of mass hitting it, it would change Earth's velocity this way, backwards in space, about two millimeters a year. It's conserved everywhere in the universe and rhinos. Thank you so much for watching, Donna. If you want more of me, you can check out Musquatch or the space program on projectalpha.com where if you sign up now for a free 30-day trial, you can get this show two days earlier than everyone else. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to Because Science across all platforms. Like, subscribe, notification bell, follow it here, and me also here. Thanks for watching. I already...